Radku? Radek Bokal. Přečteš to? A, Denis. So let me introduce you to Dennis Gilmore. He's actually going to tell you something about how Fedora is being built. He's part of release engineering, right? Yeah. Not vice president? Not vice president. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he's actually my Apparently colleague. Apparently they don't pay me enough for so. that. So. Okay. So I'm Dennis Gilmore. I'm the Fedora release engineer. And I'm just going to kind of talk about how some of how we do things in release engineering today to make Fedora, make it available and some of the changes that we, you know, what are useful to make and we need to make to be able to deliver the Fedora dot next bits and pieces that are coming. So the release engineering today is a very disjointed thing in that we run a bunch of scripts and we have a whole bunch of different manual processes that are run on different machines in different places and it's not a cohesive thing to put together the release. We do this here and we do that there, and it's you know not very. It's it's time consuming and it's also not a process that is really highly visible because none of the machines you know like put logs and make them available, and you don't actually know that oh the compose has started or the compose is you know in progress or it's finished or where it's at. It's kind of you know QA puts in a request via a rel ends ticket saying we want to compose with these builds pulled in and then we go off and we do it and when it's done we go here you go here's the magic output and it's you know it's kind of a black box and people treat it as such and it means you know over the years it's been kind of hard to contribute because no one really knows what it is that we do or how it's going so you know, the we and w another thing we do is we only do um, full composers of the release when we get to test and test compose and release can that candidate compose time. So for you know we do the Fedora 19 final release, it's done. We don't do a single compose until we get ready to think about doing Fedora 20 alpha, which usually results in a broken mess. The you know. First, test composers usually take three or four days to actually compose because we didn't realize, oh, you know, this thing's changed under Anaconda and this other thing's got this step and, you know, the ISO's too big or, you know, whatever. There's a lot of brokenness and, you know, because we don't do it as frequently as we could, we don't detect changes and fix breakages quick enough. So that's kind of today. It's a bit of a mess. If anyone has any questions on anything at any point, feel free to ask as we go because it's generally easier, you know, at least for me. So Fedora.next is throwing a monkey wrench in the works. It's a good thing, but it's, you know, we've got multiple products. We've got a lot of extra deliverables and, you know, just a lot more to do and, you know, Apparently, I can't work 24 hours a day and get everything done. So, you know, and we've got things like more frequent deliverables. We're likely to have, you know, maybe cloud images and Docker images and stuff that we might deliver them monthly with updates. You know, make it available so that people can, you know, access them quicker. We're going to do things like deliver to, you know, EC2 and uh, uh, Google's cloud engine and, you know, possibly other clouds and. You know, so we're going to have a lot more deliverables. We've got three products, so instead of having, you know, a Fedora image and you know the Fedora DVD, we're probably going to have three DVDs, and you know, each one of those things takes time. The process today, which I'll run through really briefly, is I run this script. I improved some of it for Fedora um, 20. Hopefully, you can read this okay.
that better? Yeah. Okay, so we feed in a couple of variables to this script. Previously, all the steps that were in here for Fedora 19 and before, I ran all of them manually in various different locations. Um, so we work out the branch that we're doing. We work out, you know, we have the destination directory and the um, final directory kickstarts. Mess around with some variables to make things look how they're supposed to be. We then update the kickstarts repo to make sure that we're always using the latest version of the Sims kickstarts. We always compose from the kickstarts in Git, not in the package. We replace a couple of repositories with ones that work inside of infrastructure. I then run a, we run a script to build live CDs, build ARM images, and build cloud images, which fires off the Koji tasks to do that. Um, they're, they're all pretty simple. Um, let's just look at the live CD one real quick. You know, we specify the architectures, take in the variables. We have a list, desktop KDE, LXDE, for the um, live CDs. This is it's kind of silly, but some of the live CDs have live CD in their name. Some say in the kickstart, some say live and some say live DVD. So we actually go through this for loop three times because of each of the different ones. It's kind of ugly, but it works. We have to substitute uh, I686 for I386 in the, in the URLs here. Uh, we feed in I686, but we need to, you know, because Yum uses, some parts use the Yum base arch, which on 32-bit is I386, and some parts need to have the actual architecture that we use, which is I686. Um, and we fire off, you know, we run Koji spin live CD, and we send the task. And we do that three times for the different variants of the um, kickstart names. We do the same thing. The script for s the cloud images and the ARM images is basically the same with some you know, slight modifications. So once we've built them, we then go through for ARM, i386 and x86, and we run Punji, which is the tool that creates the install media. On ARM, we don't actually create a DVD, but on you know, x86 arches, we do. So we SSH into one of the two compose boxes where we do it. And we then, you know, init a chiroot. We, the chiroot um, install, the mock config has, um, you know, like Punji and all the tools that we need in it so we don't need to install anything extra. We then run Punji and get our install tree, which per art, and because there's no locking in, so Punji uses a shared cache and there's no locking, so if you try to run each of the Punji runs in parallel, it tends to stomp on itself as it's trying to download the source RPMs and the no watch RPMs into the cache, and it just keeps downloading and failing, downloading and failing, writing over each other. So we actually do that in serial. It's a process that takes about five hours, I think, for Fedora 20 to run, to create the three install trees. It's kind of you know slow and clunky, but it goes through and then it runs repo closure to make sure that there's you know, no broken dependencies that we put at the, you know, in the track ticket at the end. We rsync the tree into place. Because um, mock doesn't work on NFS storage, we have to run Punji on local disk, and we have some, um, the cache is shared over NFS, and we have a couple of other bits. But then once we've created the tree on the local disk, we then have to rsync it back onto the shared storage so that we can combine all the different architectures together. We, at the end of the process, we have to run hard link to make sure that all the no-watch RPMs are hard linked between all the different architectures. It's a somewhat time-consuming process, but needs to be done, otherwise mirrors get really unhappy when you have three exactly the same copies of a no-watch you know, RPM in, in place. We run a script called build compose info, which creates a dot in compose info file that is used in Beaker, which is used for some of the QA bits and pieces. I don't think anyone else actually uses it. We then make sure that the live CD and appliance tasks have completed. 
once they've completed, we then make the directories where they all go. And we run this really ugly sudo via the relng group to make sure that there's consistent permissions and hard link the task output from the Koji tasks into the tree. We do that for each of the different types of images. We then need to move some of them around because some things go in the spins directory and some things go in the live directory for the live CDs. It's kind of messy. One of the things that we need is a mesh tool to create a, you know, the tree how we need it. We then go through and make some checksums for the live CDs and for the images. We then make a directory that goes to the public mirror. So all of this to date has been done on systems and storage that's only available inside of the Fedora infrastructure in Phoenix. We then you know, make the directory where it becomes available for, you know, rel and, uh, for QA to do their testing. We make sure that we run a chmod, make sure that they can't actually see it until it's done. We then go through and rsync all of the content into place. And then we output a little bit of information that we copy and paste into the track ticket. And we have to manually run a chmod at the end to make sure to make it available and open once we verify that we actually have a compose that looks sane. So that's today's compose process. And I used to do all of the, all those steps by hand manually, and some of the stuff would be done from my laptop, some would be done, yes? <laughs> maybe, maybe that's why I'm always grumpy. Um, so that, that, that's the process that we go through today for Compose, and for Fedora 20 it was a lot easier than it was for previous releases because I wrote the script and kind of put some of the bits together, but it's still, pretty ugly and the whole process takes somewhere between six to eight hours depending on you know disk IO load and network load and other bits and pieces so it's not a very quick process you know we can't quickly turn around and say oh we've got this fedora tree and oh we found this bug let's make another one with this one fix in it's you know it, 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 it's kind of an ugly thing So going forward, we're going to have a lot more deliverables and a lot more things to do. And adding those things to do to the existing process is probably going to make, by my rough calculations, make the process take about 24 hours from the time that a compose is requested to the time we actually get to the end of everything done, which is not very ideal at all. At least, I don't think it is. And I'm pretty sure that QA doesn't want to wait that long. And yes, sir. Well, they're, they're not run on builders. They're run on, um, there's some compose boxes and they're running a mock to root in, in that builder or on that machine. Um, well, they, they use a shared cache. They're not always, like the ARM doesn't happen on the same machine as the x86, but we, use, we have to use a shared cache because if we don't, I mean, we, we could probably not do it and you know, make sure that hard link gets things right and you know, put it together, but it, you know, Pungy actually hard links the bits across and it just works much easier to use a shared cache. Yeah, I mean, but you gotta have time to do that. So yeah, that, that's, that's one of the things is that Pungy needs to get some locking so that it can go, oh, you know, another Pungy is getting this file. I don't need to worry about it and can move on to the next file. So there's some locking. There's, th there's definitely ways to improve, you know, the way that Pungy's done so that we can run multiple instances of Pungy at, at once. And we need to do that because, you know, instead of running Pungy three times to make the you know, Fedora as we do today, we're likely going to have to run Pungy about 12 times to, you know, but the base is going to make a install of some form to make sure that you know the stuff in it while we may not release that installation tree 
we need to make sure that the base is installable, that Anaconda runs, you know, the things that the base working group is responsible for, make sure that they, you know, are consistent and they work. We need to have a workstation set of installation media. We need to have a server set of installation media. We need to have a cloud set of installation media because the tooling that we're moving to for creating appliance images relies on Anaconda and feeding, uh, you know, an install tree into it. So, you know, the cloud working group, whether they want it or not, is getting an installable cloud product. So, you know, that means at least 12 instances of Punji. And if we had to run that all in serial, it's going to take a long time. You know, it, part of the benefit of the cache is, you know, each time you run through, Punji downloads the source RPM, the no arch RPM, that, you know, the arch specific RPMs, puts them into the cache, and then hard links them into the tree. Though while we're going across file systems, it's actually copying. But if you ran separate instances of Punji without the shared cache, you then have to download all the source RPMs every time, all of the binary RPMs every time, which slows down the process. You want the cache to you know, try and make it as quick as possible. So going forward, we're going to make things agile. And not agile as in you know, daily scrums and stuff like that. I'm not doing that. But agile as in you know, able to deliver things as needed, you know, have more on-demand composing, make the compose process be quicker so that, you know, if we do find that one bug in that one package, we can easily just go, oh, we're going to run another compose and pull this one little change in and see if, you know, it's right. So, you know, make the whole process be lighter weight is what I mean by agile. It's going to be more transparent, which means that, you know, you'll be able to see as a developer, you can see, oh, you know, my bug fix for this release blocker is currently going into Compose right now, and it's going to be available in you know two hours or whatever. And so you're not you know with, with today's process, the request is filed. You know at some point down the road when everything's run and done, the the ticket's updated, and in between there's no idea well where are things at as it started. You know occasionally QA will ping me and like oh have you started because we found this other thing and you know. Oh yeah, I've started, and they're like, okay, well, it'll wait till the next one. And so, you know, I want to take away that, you know, black box mentality of release engineering and make it be, you know, a more visible thing. I want things to be automated so that we can, instead of, you know, not composing between a final and the test compose for an alpha, we're constantly doing, you know, weekly or daily or whatever composes that make sense so that we know when, oh, you know, System D's changed all these things, and it now breaks the world, or whatever. You know, E2FS progs changes, and Anaconda can no longer make file systems, or you know, whatever, whatever it may be that breaks things. We're you know, on top of it quickly and able to you know, deliver a better Fedora. So hopefully, you know, weekly at least, I think we'll have full composers, but maybe you know more frequently. I don't know. There's it's kind of a thing for discussion with QA and other folks as to, you know, what makes sense. So the path forward to get there. The big thing that I want to do is put in a Compose database, which, as I see it, would be a back-end only. I don't want to write front-ends. I'm not a web developer. and But it would keep track of everything that goes into a Compose, not only for the primary architectures, but for the secondary architectures, so that you can just go, oh, you know, this Compose that we had, you know, two weeks ago worked. The one that we had today didn't. You can run a quick query and find out these are all the things that changed between, you know, the one that worked and the one that didn't. So then you can narrow down quicker, you know, what has changed to cause the breakage. I wanted to, you know, like keep track of releases and the status. So, you know, like Fedora 12 is end of life. Fedora 19 is, you know, currently stable. Fedora 21 is in development, and so you can, you know, you get a quick glance as to, you know, what's the status of the releases. For, you know, the stable releases, you'll be able to know oh, updates were last pushed, you know, 24 hours ago or 12 hours ago, or, you know, there's updates currently being in progress, you know, the pushes are in progress, and so you can know that, oh, my update for my security fix is going to be out in the wild in, you know, six hours or whatever, just to 
kind of increase the visibility, increase the knowledge of what's going in and out of composers, the status of releases. Um, so you know, ideally, you can be able to see the difference between you know primary and secondary. You can see that you know S390 is you know 2,000 builds behind primary. PPC is you know 50 builds behind, and just kind of give a better overall picture of where you know Fedora is in everything really in the w in the life cycles and you know what's broken all that kind of stuff so that's composed db it's a really really big project for the front end of it i really want to engage with um paul fields's team and guys and do a unified type front end that encompasses bodai package database the composed database koji where you can see, oh, this build, you know, you can go look up a build and see, oh, it's in, you know, these 10 composers. It was pushed as an update at this point. It's in updates testing. Oh, you know, I'm really interested in, you know, package foo, so you can click and say, I want to be the co-maintainer of this package. Uh, provide feedback for packages, all that kind of stuff. So that instead of, you know, going over here and doing this thing, going here, doing this thing, and over here and doing this thing, it's all a unified combined you know visual and access into where fedora is you know in its in all the different, different pieces i want to do all of the release engineering composers and tasks in koji so you know right now we run punji on a compose box i want to make a task that runs punji in koji so that the logs for the punji runs are available for people to see you can see oh you know this is where it is and just to yes sir yes yeah I mean, D the dvd isos we today we build the live cds and we including live you know the the dvd size ones in koji want to you know make the do the mash tasks in koji run the punji tasks in koji uh, you know all the, all the all the different things all the different steps that we do there's really no reason other than we don't do it, that it can't be done in Koji. And you know, that's, to me at least, is a big step in making things more visible because you can easily see where it is just by going to Koji and looking at you know, the different tasks. So uh, I want to do 